perfect lobby with the okay. Prime Minister. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. My name is Nancy Ramsey. I serve as the director of the Soul Repair Center at the Divinity School, Bright Divinity School on the campus of TCU in Fort Worth. And I'm very pleased to welcome all of you to this conference, this national conference that's sponsored by the Soul Repair Center. The center was established in 2012. Dr. Rita Nakashima Brock and Norm Kaiser, a retired colonel in the US Army, were the founding co-directors. Sadly, Chaplain Kaiser died this year, but I want to ask Dr. Rita Nakashima Brock, who continues her work as in moral injury as the senior vice president with Volunteers of America, to stand and receive our thanks for her pioneering work. From its founding in 2012 until June of 2017, Dr. Brock worked tirelessly to promote public education about moral injury around the country and internationally, and to encourage research. Many of the presenters here today represent those efforts, especially in developing resources to equip religious leaders and faith communities to respond to persons affected by moral injury, and that is now the mission of the center. I also wish to recognize Dr. Newell Williams, President of Bright, who is with us today and who is a staunch supporter of the Center since its inception. Dr. Williams. I also want to express deep appreciation to Iliff School of Theology and especially Dean Bo Young Lee, who welcomed our inquiry about allowing the conference to be held on this lovely campus today. The two schools both participate in a network of seminaries seeking to equip persons for military chaplaincy that also includes Boston University School of Theology where Dr. Shelley Rambo teaches and she will join us in the opening plenary. Iliff's Dean, Dr. Bo Young Lee, will welcome us after lunch since she happens to be teaching a seminar this morning. And in her stead now is the Reverend Dr. Kathy Kelsey, Dean of the Chapel and Spiritual Formation and the Gerald L. Schlesman, Professor of Methodist Studies, please welcome Dr. Kelsey. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to ILF School of Theology and to this day. It's been an honor for us to work with the Soul Repair Center in um, preparing the space for you in this day. Um, I want to say special thanks to um, my colleague, Professor Carrie Doring. Um, who has been working as part of um, the preparation for this event. Are you willing to stand, Carrie? She's in the very back. I get the pleasure of making sure you know the logistics you need. Restrooms go out either door to your right. There's a handicapped restroom. If you go to the men's room and then look to your left, there's a handicapped restroom um, there as well. In, in case of emergency, if you need to get out of the building, if you go out the right door, you just keep going right around and you'll be immediately outdoors or go out the door you came in and go left and out the door that you came in. There is Wi-Fi in this room. If you would like to connect to it, the password is theology at sign Denver exclamation point. Capitalized theology, theology capitalized at sign Denver capitalized exclamation point. And you're more than welcome to um, join us on that secure Wi-Fi system. Um, I think we'll leave it there. Okay. Okay, food will be outside, uh, actually in the hallway between these two sets of doors, both at the break and at lunchtime. And if you have any other questions or needs, um, please don't hesitate to ask me or any other ILIF person that you encounter. Welcome. Today, your folders describe the program and our schedule for it. I want now to express particular appreciation to the Reverend Amanda Henderson, I'm happy to say a graduate of Bright, and the Director of Interfaith Alliance Colorado based here in Denver, and Rabbi Kim Garinger, who have guided the preparations for the interreligious opening ritual that was available to each of us individually as we arrived, and which we will experience together in a few moments at the official opening of our conference. Thank you especially to the three religious leaders, 
who have led us or contributed to the opening ritual. And I also will join Kathy Kelsey in expressing appreciation to Carrie Doring, Professor of Pastoral Care and Pastoral Theology at Pastoral Counseling at, at ILIF. Dr. Doring has worked very hard to help make this conference a success. In recent months, she has experienced both the deaths of one of her sons and a few weeks ago, her husband. It seemed wise for her to step away from conference leadership um, in the context of such grief. You see in our documentation that Dr. Doring offers a very important voice in developing resources for spiritual care with those affected by moral injury. We are also very sorry that U.S. Army veteran and community Muslim chaplain, Sharita Hossein, is also too ill to join us in this conference. She would have been a part of the opening panel and led a workshop, and we will miss her and Dr. Doring on the first panel and in that workshops this afternoon. For those of you familiar with ILIF, I need also to say that, especially today, we miss Dr. Larry Graham. So I'm already in tears. Um, Dr. Graham is Emeritus Professor of Pastoral Theology and Care, whose death a year ago, shortly after his retirement from ILIF, was a profound loss to the field of pastoral theology and especially for the constructive work in moral injury. And you will hear his work cited in your workshops and in the plenaries today. I am very grateful to the ILIF staff who have worked so hard to accommodate the needs of such a conference that just kept growing in size. Donna Frey, Fry, Soon Beng, Andy Reeder, and Kyle Monroe. Kyle is in the back making sure that sound works. I'm also grateful that the Soul Repair Center is making use of ILA's robust IT resources, and we will be providing a recording of these two plenaries, the first and the early afternoon plenary, which will be available to you free of charge on the Bright Soul Repair Center webpage at the, at the Bright webpage um, beginning uh, November 26. So you'll be free to use that in your teaching or in whatever organization you might wish to. You'll also find a listing of the leadership for each part of the conference in your folders, as well as a suggested list of resources. The leadership list is on the right, the resources on the left. I um, hope that you will agree with me that we have gathered distinguished colleagues to provide leadership for this conference and I look forward also to learning together with you because you bring important uh, constructive ideas and we look forward to providing opportunities to hear those ideas. We also realize that some of us who are here will self-identify as affected by moral injury. Dr. Alan Baruti and Suzanne Baruti are available as support for those during these plenaries and I'm going to ask them briefly to identify themselves. They're in the back of the room. If you wish to speak with them at any point during the conference. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. Let's turn our attention now to the opening ritual and then proceed with our conference schedule. Um, and I promise that we will not take the lost time out of your breaks. <laughs> Please, do you need a microphone? Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I hope that you all were able to participate in one of the rituals, and we have different scriptures from all of our traditions. Um, our thought is that in the context of moral injury and healing, there are different rituals that bring us connection across our different traditions. And water is one of the common themes across our traditions that is a symbol of cleansing and healing and life and renewal. And so we have brought people together from our Muslim tradition and Christian and Jewish and Buddhist traditions to show you, to explain uh, briefly how water is used in our different traditions as a symbol of healing and cleansing. So Kim, I wonder if you would go first and uh, just explain for briefly how, what our traditions are around healing in water. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Rabbi Kim Geringer from... I'm Rabbi Kim Geringer from Hebrew Union College, Jewish Institute of Religion in New York. Um, in Judaism, we use water in many ways, um, uh, some of which I'm going to speak about in the workshop later this afternoon. Um, for our purposes here today, um, in Judaism, traditionally, uh, we wash hands prior to something important happening. 
for instance, uh, waking from sleep before prayer, leaving a cemetery before breaking bread, um, and hand washing performed by ritual leaders prior uh, preparing to bless people. Um, the way we do it, and I had the opportunity to show a few of you, um, is to wash each hand three times. Um, so I'm going to do that now, and then I'm going to offer um, a prayer that I think is particularly important um, at the um, beginning of this conference. So this is how we would do it. It's a little easier if you have a jug that has two handles. And I would say, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu V'Kiyamanu V'Higianu Lazman Hazeh. Blessed are you, source of all life, who has kept us alive and sustained us and enabled all of us to reach this very special moment. Amen. <laughs> My name is Anthony Hill, a 24-year Army veteran uh, and ordained Methodist minister, and I chose the Love Feast uh, to share with you today, and some of you were able to stop by. Uh, this little-known ritual in the Methodist tradition is one that emphasizes the fact that love given is not love lost. And so the setup in the particular ritual is similar to communion, except you would have bread and you would have water instead of the wine. And as congregates come forward, they're given a piece of bread by the person leading the service. And then they go around the room and they tear a piece of bread off the piece that they have to others that they meet and they pass the piece. At the end of that, Everyone should have as much bread as they started with or more. Um, and then water is passed around, and then each individual is asked to ritually drink to water. And that comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 13, where it says we're all baptized into one body, whether we're Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and made to drink into the same spirit. And so I say that we all, uh, whether we're Jew, Gentile, Christian, Muslim, non-affiliate, whatever, drink into the same spirit, and may the peace of God be with you. My name is Kulsum. Uh, I am the executive director of Multicultural Mosaic Foundation, which is an interfaith organization. And um, as they explained, water is, is, is important for Muslims too. Uh, so we have five times daily prayer, which we believe you communicate directly with God. With God. Allah for Muslims. So in order to be able to communicate with God purely and in a perfect, in a good way, in a perfect way, that you have to clean your physical body and also your soul too. So we, uh, you know, it's really difficult to show all of them over here, but I can explain it to you guys. And it's interesting, we wash three times too. <laughs> so you wash your hand three times, you wash your mouth, nose, and your face, your uh, elbows, your, your uh, arms to the elbows and head, you can tap with the water, you don't have to wash. And, and then your ears and your necks and also your, your feet. The, the meaning for that is, you know, it symbolizes those body parts, your physical body and also the spirit inside of your physical body. So you can uh, clean and you can just like you should also think that while you are doing those, if you have done or if you have intent to do something wrong with those uh, physical parts of your body, that is a kind of repenting, so purifying yourself so you can be able to communicate with God. So I have some little informations over here. If anyone wants to get, I, I'm going to leave it over there that you guys can take it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Reverend Diana Thompson. I'm a minister at the Tri-State Denver Buddhist Temple, which is located just in downtown Denver. Um, for our ritual, 
It is, uh, we call it the bathing of the Buddha. Now, largely through Buddhist tradition, this is a way to, when we see the Buddha, we are also seeing truth. And when we see truth, we are seeing the Buddha. So it's a way to sort of show respect to the Buddha, but also to wash the kleshas, the defilements off of ourselves and get ready for the day. And this ritual comes from the story of the birth of the Buddha. It is said that when he was born in Lumbini Garden, a sweet tea rain fell from the sky. And this was a way to sort of show that he was purified and was going to be a great enlightened being. For my particular sect of Buddhism, um, the only time we do this ritual is at the time of the Buddha's birthday. So when we do it, uh, we come forward and we bow down and we three times as well, pour Buddha, uh, water over the Buddha's head to uh, sort of take refuge in the Buddha, in the Dharma, which are the teachings, and in the Sangha, which is the large community. And I would uh, usually need to be facing the Buddha here, but the Buddha is facing all of you. I will stand behind your truths today, so now you can see the truth itself. Thank you all. And if you want to take your things and we're all done. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. So I'm going to ask the other panelists to come forward. If you all need to refresh coffee, to take, if you can do it in three minutes, please. <laughs> we'll get organized up here.